This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Check the link down below to learn more. So over the last couple weeks, I have been on an adventure that is to try to get Linux to work completely perfectly on this laptop. This laptop was featured in a video I did about a month ago called Linux on an expensive laptop. The expensive laptop being this Asus ROG Sapphirus M16. It's a pretty beefy machine. It has a NVIDIA 3070 in it with an Intel Core i9 processor. But the main issue that I was having with this, with the distribution we tried out then, which was Pop! OS, was the scaling, specifically fractional scaling, just doesn't work very well. Setting it to something like 150 to 125%, which looks really good on this display. It's a 2K display, uh, 16 by 10. So using just 100%, everything's too small. Using 200%, it just doesn't look good at all. Setting it to about 150%, some of the system components looked good. There are a couple applications that pulled that properly, but things like Steam, GIMP, DaVinci Resolve, all of those things just didn't look good or required some sort of special bash script or dot desktop customization to get to look right. Not a very good experience to have to go and manually edit things on a application specific basis. And in addition to that, I got some random lags and big pro applications like DaVinci Resolve would work, but they were much slower than being on Windows. So that was a no go. So I went ahead and installed Manager R on this with KDE Plasma. It looked great but it broke on an update. I think it had something to do with the NVIDIA drivers, which would in return give me problems, a lot of problems going forward. Thank you, NVIDIA. So then I went ahead and tried out KDE Neon because that's the, what KDE makes for their distribution for Plasma. So I figured that would be good. And that's when I experienced my first EFI issue. This laptop, the, the hard drive is kind of weird because even on Windows, when you put in the Windows installation medium, you have to load special drivers to get Windows to even recognize there is a hard drive in this thing. Luckily, Linux does recognize it without any special manipulation or drivers, but I was getting a lot of issues with it trying to install the boot partition and EFI entries. So I tried Kubuntu, gave me the same issue. I'm like, okay, this is going to be a repeated problem. So I tried manually partitioning that worked okay at first, but it still had an error with the boot partition creation, which it took me a bit to figure out, but there were two substantial issues with this one. There were too many EFI entries within the system. So for some reason, when I tried to install a new distribution, it could not overwrite or change out a previous entry. And luckily that's when I discovered the EFI boot manager command, which this will allow you to see all the entries in the EFI and actually delete entries, which I did, that helped. But near the end of the installation, every single time I kept getting the same error, which was that it just didn't work. And the solution was to reinstall Grub on that partition, but I ran into issues with it getting to properly communicate by mounting the drives. I followed a couple different guides, but all of them were slightly out of date. So I found a wonderful application, and that application is called Boot Repair. This thing, uh, at first didn't work because I had the drive mounted and you can't do that. So after the system was installed with the failed or corrupted uh, boot partition, I rebooted into the live disk or live environment, installed this application and it worked. It completely fixed it. It's a remarkable application. And to the developer, I say, thank you. You, my gratitude is with you. So I was able to run that. I was able to boot into Kubuntu and at first, everything was working fine. The fractional scaling was okay. Steam still looked like it did in Pop! OS. It was small. I had to do some custom things, some bash scripting to actually fix that. And then that's when I started running into problems with the uh, NVIDIA drivers. They just were not cooperating. I tried updating them. It borked the system. I reinstalled it, did a different package, installed it a different way. Uh, Splitgate, I got that to work. I really wanted Elden Ring to work. That didn't work. So eventually I went with the solution that was right in front of my face the whole time. And that was Fedora. Uh, before I talk about how awesome Fedora is, I'm going to talk about how awesome the sponsor of today's video is. Squarespace. Squarespace is a wonderful platform to go ahead and publish your websites with ease. If you're somebody who doesn't like really playing around in the terminal that much, you don't want to build your own custom servers and you just need a easy, intuitive 
web builder, Squarespace is a fantastic option for you. With integrated SEO and analytic tools, everything you're gonna need is in one place. And if you go ahead and use the link down below, you can get 10% off your first order. So click the link, check it out. So Fedora, Fedora, I, I've thus far had the best experience. And I think at this point, everything that I want to work is working perfect. Now there are three main checkboxes that I needed to check to actually say that this is the perfect experience on this laptop. One, I need scaling to work. I just don't want to have to go through and manually do things. I need my games to work. I know Elden Ring runs on Linux and I know Splitgate for sure runs. So those both should run completely fine. And third, I need to be able to load up DaVinci Resolve and have no significant performance differences between any other system that I own. Those three things, if I'm able to meet those and the system just works in general, I'm, I'm a happy camper. And luckily this has checked all those boxes. So first the fractional scaling thing. Now it was giving me the same kind of issue at first with some of the applications being different, being that it's KDE, it did do a little bit better than GNOME or Pop! OS that I previously tried out. But then what I did was I simply logged out and booted into the Wayland instance. That gave me some minor like screen tearing issues, but it completely fixed the fractional scaling. Wayland, I used to avoid it, but now after using it on this machine, it is awesome. Fractional scaling is instant, so I don't need to like restart the computer to make any uh, changes go into effect. It just works. And like if I open up Steam here, you can see that this is looking absolutely perfect. GIMP looks as it should. It's the some of the buttons are a little bit big on GIMP, but I'd rather be them be a little bit too big than too small. And I could obviously just customize that and change that after the fact. And now with that, I needed games to work. And for games to work properly on this, I have to have the proper drivers. Now, <laughs> this is one of those systems that it has kind of hybrid graphics as the dedicated GPU as well as the integrated Intel GPU. And that, that just the whole switching between those just is not really a thing. Even on pop OS, you can select what to do, but you have to reboot. You can't just easily switch and stay in the same instance. If you switch from the Intel to the Nvidia C or GPU, you're going to have to restart your system. This is actually working now, but I'm pretty sure the Nvidia GPU is just on all the time, which really is not good for the battery life. I mean, I could probably get away with like two hours of battery life with a screen on, not really doing too much. If I load up a game, it's basically the same as Pop! OS where you'll basically get just under an hour of gameplay. But actually getting the NVIDIA drivers on this was pretty easy. I just needed to enable the RPM Fusion repositories and then go ahead and install the driver. And just like that, everything worked. And it was really nice to see Elden Ring open because in previous attempts at getting this to work, it just wouldn't. It had some sort of graphical overlay error when I was trying to get it to open, but running Wayland on the video on this machine seemed to have fixed all those issues. So that's awesome. And just overall, there's no bad performance. You can see the gameplay right now. It's smooth, it's crisp, it works perfect. It's, I can't say for sure, but it seems like there's less dropped frames and all that than the windows. The frame rates are roughly the same as they were on that system. So with that running now, I can actually kind of focus on working and that is with those pro creative applications, specifically DaVinci Resolve. If you have ever tried to install DaVinci Resolve on Linux, chances are you've had some sort of issues. Now this didn't give me any issues at all. All. It worked perfect. One thing, the DaVinci Resolve is meant to be installed on Red Hat Linux or CentOS. Being that this is Fedora, it's pretty close to what it's actually supposed to be installed on. So installing it was as easy as just running the .run file that you download directly from Blackmagic. When I first opened it up, it did not recognize my GPU. And that was a uh, relatively easy fix. I just needed to add the CUDA drivers in addition and with those installed, then it recognized my actual GPU, so I was able to use the application. So with that, I checked off all my main boxes, but the very last thing was actually using this for a little while, just to make sure everything worked. And after a little bit, I rebooted the system a few times, and one of the times I turned on the computer, it just did not boot. It sat there on the boot loop, the little Fedora 
loading circle thing was frozen. And I power shut, or I hard shut it down, did it again, same thing, same thing like four times, and then it eventually booted up. And that was very uh, concerning because I went through all this work and I thought I had the perfect system and now it just didn't want to boot properly. Luckily, thank heavens, it was a super easy fix. I just had to go into the grub configuration file. And then under the entry that is grub cmd line Linux, all I needed to do was remove the RHGB option, uh, saved that, saved the grub configuration properly, rebooted the system, and it completely skipped that. And it worked, it worked, finally. I now have a Linux system on this laptop that just works. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but I have been fighting with this thing for so long. I didn't even tell you about all of these different systems and distributions and errors I had. I tried OpenSUSE on this for a minute. I had issue with secure boot configuration option being enabled. I disabled that and then it was kind of doing the same thing as Fedora, but it was also super laggy. It's been a mission. Ultimately, what I'm concluding from this video is Fedora is an absolutely wonderful Linux distribution that just works. I think uh, the Linux experiment uploaded a video uh, a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, about his review for using Fedora long term and come to the same conclusion. Fedora is fantastic. Fedora should be one of the default systems that people go to. There is a little bit more work and depending on your uh, flavor or what desktop environment you go with, there may be some extra things you need to do. But luckily, if you're interested in installing Fedora, I have a video of the things to do after you install Fedora. Um, yeah, so if you have a moderately decent computer with specs that even Windows has a hard time figuring out sometimes, Fedora is probably a really good option. Uh, with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring. If you want to create a website with no issue at all, with a ton of different features, uh, email, marketing campaigns, analytic tools, stores, whatever you may need, it is a great option for you. Uh, with all that, thank you to our YouTube members, Patreon supporters. I hope you all have a beautiful day and goodbye.